Hello, Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do my review on 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. This, um, it's season five, episode eight. And um, this one is titled Calm Before the Storm. Mm -mm. I think it should be titled Cry Me a River. Okay, let's get started. First, oh my gosh. The first couple is Usman and Kimberly. Okay, we see Usman and Kimberly in bed and they're fake sleeping because Usman is wearing a robe and he didn't go to bed in a robe and the cameramen are there so somebody had to let them in. All right, so they're fake sleeping. Um, Kimberly, um, she rolls over and she puts her hand on his chest. Um, Kimberly, Kimberly said to the cameras that uh, that she has not kissed Usman, but he was touching certain body parts. She's lying. He did not touch any body part. He touched her hand. He did not touch any body part. In his confessional, Usman said, um, in his culture... It is not allowed to be in her room holding her hand. See, he, all he did was hold her hand. Hold her hand without an engagement ring. And then the messy producer said to Uzma, he said, weren't you intimate with your ex-wife the first night you met? And Uzma told the producer that him and his ex-wife were engaged before she came to the country. Okay, so um, Kimberly told Usman that he should bring his clothes to her room. So Usman goes back to his room and packs all his crap and brings it to her room. Okay, the um, the guys, his um, manager and his assistant, they came by, but I'm not going to talk about them because I don't see why they get camera time. So I am not going to talk about them. But yeah, he packed his stuff and goes back to her room. But meanwhile, he while he's packing his stuff in his room, She's in her room and she's coming out of the shower and she puts on this pink Walmart sleep dress. And there's nothing wrong with Walmart sleep dress. I wear them too, but you don't wear that to, to you don't, you know, why would she wear that there? She said, um, yeah, she comes out of the shower and she puts, puts on this pink little thing, sleep, sleep shirt or a sleep dress and, um, and a robe. And then she's drinking champagne and the producer asked her what's going to happen tonight. These producers are so messy. The producers ask her what's the producer ask her what's gonna happen tonight and she said she is trying to seduce Usman. She has on that little Walmart nighty. That's not gonna seduce. She should have gotten some um Victoria's Secrets. She got on this little cheap Walmart nighty. Anyway, she said last night she was disappointed, but tonight it's going it's gonna be on and popping. She didn't say that, that's my words, but tonight she's gonna try and get her some. She said she has her liquid courage, which is her champagne. And she said she's cute. And she has no makeup on because that's the way Usman likes it. And she's wearing her little Walmart. She said she's wearing, she calls it lingerie, but it's, it's a little nighty from Walmart. Okay, so we see Usman. He's at Kimberly's door with all his luggage. Kimberly opens the door and she is over the moon when she sees that he has his luggage. Um, Kimberly's her bed is decorated nicely. I think she probably had the, um, the staff of the hotel come and do it because I don't think she could have done it that nicely, but her bed is decorated with petals and stuff. Um, Usman said, um, Kimberly wants the, um, yam, yummy, yummy. <laughs> How did he go? He goes, yummy, yummy. <laughs> um, he, she wants the yummy, yummy from him. Um, she shows him her Walmart 90. She pulls, you know. Yeah, she shows him her wall at 90, and he told her she looked good. And she told him to be comfortable while she go get him some champagne. And he sits on the bed, and he takes off his shirt, and she brings him champagne, and he pulls her robe back to look at her body. And she finally takes the robe off, and they get into bed. And she asks him for some sex. And he said no. <laughs> and, um... Kimberly, no is no, Kimberly. She doesn't know what no is. How many times must this man tell her no? 
And she asks him why. And he says, we're, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. We're not in a relationship. No. <clears throat> and she said, this is bullshit. She said, this is bullshit and I can't live like this, is what she says. What is she talking about? You've had not had sex in a while, so you've been living like that. So what are you talking about? So she goes and pours herself more champagne. And he gets up, puts his, his, shirt, his shirt on, and walks out. And I don't blame him. And he tells her good night, and he leaves out. And then Kimberly, she puts on her robe, and she follows him out to, to wherever he went, down the steps, wherever. And he says, leave me alone. <laughs> um, and he told her to go get his bags. <laughs> And she says, I'm not your assistant. I'm not your manager. I'm not going to go get your bags. And he says, well, open the door and I'll go get my own bags. So when she gets, when he gets to, when they get back to the room, she practically begs him not to leave. And she said, don't leave. We don't have to have sex. Don't leave. So he said, okay. And then they hug. And then they get into bed. And this time he kept his shirt on. <laughs> He's scared now. He's scared. I think he gave up his room now. He doesn't have a place to stay. And he's embarrassed to go knock on the guy's door and say, let me sleep over. Let me sleep in here. Because why wouldn't he just take his crap and go back to his room? I think he gave his room up. So they get into bed and Kimberly is still wanting to know why he won't have sex with her. And then she starts to cry. This is what this um episode should have been called. Cry me a river. She actually starts to cry. Because this man won't have sex with her. So Uzma, he feels sorry for her. So he gives her a hug. And he tells her to stop crying. And um, he says, go to bed. And she goes, no, I want sex. <laughs> and he tells her no again, I guess. And then she gets up. She puts her robe on. And she said, she had the nerve. You know what she said? She said, she says, um... Her son is going to cuss Uzma out like a dog. Why? Because he won't if he won't he won't have sex with you? What is he gonna say? You better have sex with my my um mother, I'm gonna cuss you out. I mean, I don't get it. Why did she bring her her son into this? She's in her fifties. Why would your son be involved in your sex life? And um U Uzma got mad when she said that Uzma got mad. Uzma says he cannot cuss me out. And um, she said her son would not like the way Usman is treating her. And Usman said, am I treating you badly? And she said, yes. <laughs> and so Usman said, I don't want to talk to your son. And um, if this is the way, the only way we can be together, then um, I don't want to be with you. But he ends up staying in her room anyway. I would have been out of there. She's a sex star, sex crave woman. I'd have been out of there. In her confessional, she says she can't believe how disrespectful he's being towards her son. She brought her son into this. What does your son have to do with Usman having sex with you? Or Usman not having sex with you? Well, that's the end of them. And I think they were the highlight of the whole show. Next is Ben. Ben lands in Peru and he's happy and excited to see Mahogany. Um... Um, he, so he's in the airport, um, and um, he's saying that he and Mahogany decided to meet at the taxi stand. So he goes to the taxi stand, and he's waiting there. He waits for about 20 minutes, and no Mahogany. She's not responding to him. She's not calling him. She's not texting him back. He starts to cry. This episode should be titled, Cry Me a River. That's a second person crying. Yeah, so he starts to cry. And he said he feels foolish and stupid. <laughs> so he gets into a taxi and he's telling the driver that he's very sad. He tells the driver that he fell in love with a girl from Peru and she's supposed to meet him here. So the driver said, well, did she know you were coming? <laughs> and he basically um, told him that he can't. she hasn't called him and she hasn't texted him. And the um, poor taxi driver said, oh my God, <laughs> he feels sorry for him. So Ben gets to the hotel, he checks in at the front desk, he goes to his room, and the producer asks him if he regrets coming to Peru, and he says yes. <laughs> and um, the producer said, um, is there a chance Mahogany is not Mahogany? And he says, there's a 3% chance she's not Mahogany. 
He believes her 100%. He believes that the father is the one that does not want her to come and meet him. That's what he thinks. He is going to ride this bus till the wheel falls off. That's what he's going to do. Well, that's the end of Ben. Next is Mike and Jimena. Mike and Jimena are leaving their little getaway. And they're going back to Jimena's apartment. They're in a van or Uber or taxi or whatever that thing is. And they're driving back to her apartment. And Mike blows his nose. <laughs> and he starts sticking the, 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 the blow nose, the tissue, into the pocket in front of the, the, the seat in front of him. And Jimena says, what did she say? She says, um, don't stick it in there. You can't put your tissue full of snot in there. That's what she tells him. He said, this is, she said, this is not your car. You need to be respectful. And Mike said, well, there's no garbage. <laughs> so she asked the driver, he managed to ask the driver for a bag and he gives her a bag and Mike put his snot tissue in the bag. <laughs> and uh, Jimena says, I can't imagine what you're like at your house. My God. That's what she says. So Mike says, I'm sorry. And in her confessional, Jimena says that, said, Mike is a slob. <laughs> she says, because he had, he has, um, he has a woman missing from his home. And I said that last week, Mike only lived, lived, ever lived, probably ever lived with his father and his grandfather. It's three men living together. They're probably farting, farting, scratching, blowing your nose, nose doing this. And all kinds of nasty, disgusting things in that house. He hasn't been around a woman in a long time. And you can tell. So Mike tells her that he has um, ADHD. And he used that as an excuse for the way he is. And I don't think so. ADHD means you, you don't concentrate well. He's saying um, because he has ADHD, he forgets to pick his clothes up off the floor. Your clothes are not supposed to be on the floor in the first place, Mike. When you take your clothes off, you put it in a hamper, a laundry hamper. You don't take your clothes off and put it on the floor. He's saying... Because he has ADHD, he can't remember to pick his clothes up off the floor. What are your clothes doing on the floor? Your, floor, your clothes are not supposed to be on the floor. So I think he's using that as an excuse. That's what I think he's doing. So she sympathized with him about that. But um, she's still nervous about living with him, you know, with him being the way he is. Being slobby, sl a slob. She said he's a slob. She's curious about, you know, she's nervous about... Um, being with him, with him being a slob. I would be nervous too. He needs to learn and do better. Okay, next we see Mike. Mike is cooking dinner. And it's just noodles and powdered cheese and milk. There's no salt. There's no pepper. There's no meat. There's no side salad. There's no vegetables. It's just noodles. And this is part of what he cooks for his father and grandfather all the time. But at least he tried, right? But nobody ate the food. Nobody ate the food. Um, Jimena told her son not to eat it because it's not cooked. I guess he should have cooked the um, noodles more because I guess the noodles were hard and they weren't cooked. But he's sitting there eating it. So I guess it's good to him. But nobody ate it. And he said he realized that nobody was eating his food. And that Jimena, when he saw the look in her face. But she told him. He asked her how it was. And she told him it was good. She said, it's very good, my love. I don't know why she said that when she knew it wasn't good and she wasn't eating it. And she told her son not to eat it. And she said if she ate it, it would give her diarrhea. So he's, Mike said, you know, I guess he'll stick to clean and he's not going to be cooking anymore. So, um, two days later, Mike meets Jimena's father for coffee. I don't like her father. Her father wants to know what's Mike's intention towards his daughter. How come he didn't care about what was happening to her when she was 15 doing, um, what was she doing? She said she was doing one night stands when she was 15. So she was doing one night stand when she was 15 without a condom, unprotected. Where was he then? That's why she had her first child. And where was he when she was going to the prison back and forth, trying to get prison, trying to get pregnant for an inmate where was he then where was her father then and where was her father when um she was living with a um a hitman where was he during her, all the, those times now he's concerned about what's mike's intention for humana when mike's been supporting her mike pays her bills 
Mike's paying for that apartment that she's in. Mike pays for the majority of the furniture in there. But now he wants to know what's Mike's intention. I don't get it. So he asks uh, Max what's his intention. And Mike says, I love her and I want to marry her. And the father said, well, do you know her? And he goes, yes. He said, well, what's her favorite color? And Mike, Mike, Mike was smart with this one. He said pink. Pink is for girls. Blue is for boys. So he said pink. <laughs> That's pretty smart. For someone who has ADHD <laughs> and can't remember anything. Anywho, um, the father says, no, her, name, her favorite color is black. I think the father is lying. He's just thrown out a color. He, he's lying. You he don't know her favorite color either. And so then he asks uh, Mike, what's her favorite food? And Mike says, anything with meat in it. But the translator was messing up. And when the translator mess up, her father says, see, that's why you need to learn how to speak Spanish. But if Humana comes to um to the States, she got to learn how to speak English. But then he she, he asks the father for um his blessings for him to marry Humana or ask Humana to marry him. And he gave the, he gave the blessing. So next we see Mike is in a park with Humana's kids. And they're on the swing and Mike tells the older one, because the young one ran off somewhere. So he told the older one that, you know, um, what did he say? He said he's leaving soon. Yeah, he says he's leaving soon and he wants to um, be his papa. And he asked the boy if he um, would want him to be his papa. And the little boy said yes. The little boy said he's going to miss Mike when he leaves. Because next we see Jimena, she's home and she's getting ready. They're all going to a restaurant to celebrate, well, to say, to a farewell dinner for Mike. And I guess they're going to meet him at the restaurant and Jimena is getting ready. She's putting on her makeup. And Jimena's stepmother think that Mike is going to propose at the dinner. And Jimena tells her father and his wife and her sister the issues she's having with Mike. About him being messy and farting and burping and all that. Her stepmother told her to be patient with Mike. She said when she married Humana's father, she didn't know how to cook. And the father taught her how to cook. Humana's father taught her how to cook. And then the stepmother said, have you thought that... Have you thought about if, um, if you end things with Mike, you no longer will... You no longer will have... Um, have a way to pay for your apartment and you'll have to start working and the father says mike said he will be there for the kids um he said they're going to have a very good future with mike and her father said you need to think about that i um her father said think about your kids and not just yourself so her father is practically saying that humana is selfish in her confessional, Humana says that um, she knows that Mike can give her and her kid a bet kids a better life, but if he proposes to her, um, she's not sure what she'll say. <coughs> That's the end of Humana and Mike. Next is Alina and Caleb. Okay, so they're in their hotel room, and Caleb is annoyed with and Alina. Um, because she didn't tell him about living with the ex while she was talking to him. And I don't think she should have told him. Because I don't see an issue. Anyway. Caleb is making. I think Caleb is making too much of a big deal out of it. Now he claims he doesn't trust Alina. Caleb thinks Alina is go, wasn't going to tell him about the ex. It, um, Elijah was the one that brought it out in the open. So he tells her he needs time to process it and that he's going to the gym and she can do whatever she want to do. Now I know um, she was fired and Caleb probably doesn't have a storyline anymore since she's not there. But I'm just going to keep reviewing it until they're not there anymore. And for Caleb, I would like Caleb to cut his hair and put a shirt on. Okay, Next time Caleb, put a shirt on and I need you to cut your hair. I don't like it. So Elena think he is using the um, secret as an excuse as to not to make a decision about their future, their future relationship. 
So an hour later, Alina goes to Elijah's room, and Elijah is packing because he's leaving. That morning, he's going back to um, Russia. Alina told Elijah that she told Caleb the secret. She told him the truth about living with her ex. Alina told, Alina told Elijah, tells Elijah that basically Caleb doesn't trust her now. And Elijah told Alina to give him space, but by the end of the trip, she should know um, what he, what, you know, what type of relationship they're in. Um, Elijah says, if not, then there are many guys waiting at their front door for Alina. If that's the case, if there are many guys waiting at the door for Alina, their front door for Alina, why is she here trying to have a relationship with Caleb, who lives all the way across the world? Why? And also, if Caleb have all these women that he's hooked up with, over 100 women that he's hooked up with, with can he find one to date out of this over a hundred women that he's hooked up with? Why is he here trying to date um, Alina? I don't get it. They should stay in their own country and date people in their own country who is right there in their face. I don't. I don't understand that. Anywho, so Caleb comes into Elijah room, Elijah's room, and um, Elijah is getting ready to leave. He hugs Alina goodbye, said goodbye to her, and Caleb walks him out. So he's outside. Caleb and um Elijah, they're outside. And um Elijah <clears throat> tells Caleb to be respectful of Alina, to look out for her, and basically let her know what type of relationship they're going to they're going to have. Caleb says, you know, that's why I'm here. And Elijah said, Alina is a queen and should be treated as one. Alina is Elijah's queen. She's nobody else's queen but Elijah's queen. But um, they hug and said goodbye. And then um, Elijah gets into the cab. And then he, while the cab was driving out, he says, Caleb, don't be a D-I-C-K. Goodbye. Guess he had to have the last word. I don't know. Next, um, Caleb FaceTime a friend with, with a friend named Luke from the States. And he tells Luke about um, Alina um, trying to push for a, a relationship with him. And then he told her, he told um, Luke about the secret that Alina was keeping from him. And he basically he said, um, what did he say? Luke told Caleb to give it more time, and at the end of the trip, that's what everybody's saying. At the end of the trip, you'll know what to do. That's what he said. So Alina and Caleb go to a bathhouse, and Caleb is, he's a pro with that wheelchair. He's pushing the hell out of that wheelchair. Um, and the bathhouse looks like it's fun. It's exactly what it says it is. Someone bathes you. They wipe you down, with, they, they rinse you down with water, and then they soap you up with some soap. So after they do that bathhouse thing, later they, later that day, they go back to the room and they're on the balcony um, of their hotel room and they're drinking tea. And Caleb tells um, Alina that he wants to forget about the secret and instead be happy. Oh, he said he wants to forget about the secret. And instead of being happy, Alina says, um, you're cold. You're always up and down. Instead of just saying thank you, you know, like, you know, she's like, you're what you're cold to me. You're up and down. You're cold. I guess you're hot one minute. You're cold the next. And he said, just be patient with me. And that was the end of their scene. Enough of them. Next we have. Next we have um, Gino and Jasmine. I was watching this last night and then I kind of fell asleep a little bit through it. And then I woke up this morning to watch it, and their segment was cut off. For some reason, I can't get the end of their segment. But I'm going to just go by memory what happened at the end of their segment. Um, they're on their way to the airport. They are going, they're taking a private plane to San Jose Island. And when going through TSA, Gino had to take his hat off. And we saw a little glimpse of his head, but we didn't really see anything. I wanted a close-up. 
Jasmine says um, she thinks he looks like Bruce Willis. And I can picture that. So they get on this little rickety plane. This little tiny plane. Private plane. And they get to um, San Jose Island. And Jasmine is being really, really sweet. They're standing on their balcony. And they're looking at the ocean. And Gino... Um, and she thanks Gino for taking her on the trip. And she apologizes... She apologizes for being a witch. <laughs> and she gets very emotional. And then she starts to cry. This episode should be called Cry Me a River. She starts to cry. But she says she's crying happy tears. So, um, this is what I remember of the very last scene. Jasmine um, was saying that she got... Um, a message from one of Gino's exes. And I think the message said that Gino was talking about Jasmine to his ex. And the ex wanted to talk to Jasmine, but Jasmine didn't want to talk to the ex, so Jasmine blocked the ex. So the next morning, she's, they're sitting outside uh, at some table, and Jasmine tells Gino, she said, I got a call. She said, I got a text from one of your ex. And Gino is looking everywhere and he's fidgeting and he's wiping his face and he's doing everything. <laughs> and she said, did you tell your ex anything about me? And he said, yes. So Jasmine says, I'm going to unblock um, unblock her and see what she says, what she wants. Why is she you know, trying to get in touch with me? So then the next thing Jasmine says is, um, did you send your ex new pictures of me? And I think that was it for their segment. It went off, I think, after that. So last but not least is Ella. Ella and her dogs, her three dogs, they drive out to her parents' ranch. And last week she said that she, um, if Johnny didn't come to the States, she was going to move on. And now she's saying that um, she's not ready to give up on a relationship with Johnny. Anyway, she gets to her parents' farm and she's helping them. She's helping out. And she's trying to feed these two cows and they want nothing to do with her. They just turn around and walk away. So she tells her parents about Johnny delaying the trip because he's afraid of catching the C-19. And then she starts to cry. This episode should be called Cry Me a River. So Ella tells her mother that she wants to buy a ticket and goes to Dubai. She wants to go to Dubai because that's where he has a ticket to Dubai, and he's supposed to stay there, I think, for two weeks and quarantine and then come to the States. But he doesn't want to come to the States now. He's delaying the trip, so she wants to buy a ticket to go to Dubai to meet Johnny. And her mother does not think it's a good idea for her to go to Dubai. Her mother says um, she'll be by herself. She's a woman. She's white. And she's naive. And her father agrees. And her mother is also worried that Ella doesn't have enough money to purchase a ticket to go to Dubai and pay her bills, pay her mortgage, pay her car no, car insurance. She doesn't think um, Ella can afford to do all that. So Ella starts to cry again. This episode should be called Cry Me a River. So Ella asks her parents if Ella, she's the type of person that will cry to get people to do what she wants them to do. When she was talking to Johnny last, um, last episode, and he said he wanted to delay the um he was delaying the um coming to the states. She started to cry. She was using her tears to get him to change his mind and come. And he he put his foot down. He was not coming. And now she's crying because she wants her parents to help her financially to get to Dubai. She starts to cry again. And then um she asks her parents if they can help her if money gets tight. And she's crying to try to manipulate them to help her out. And that's what she, she did with Johnny. And it didn't work with Johnny. But it worked with the parents. They said they'll support her. And then they hug her. And the scene went off. And that was it. And this is the end of my review slash recap of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. And also like, comment, and share my videos. I will be back next week for another review. Um, thank you so very, 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 very much for watching. Princess on a Pillow here. Uh, see you next week. Bye.